everyone. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have Dave Johnson. I don't know which this way or that way. I'm always mirrored, so I don't ever never know which side you're really on. <laughs> so, all right. So what we do here with uh, Dave Johnson is I have asked you guys to put a whole bunch of questions on my community page, which you have. And then he uh, channels them and sees what he sees and goes through all of that. So, but I want to catch up. Um, what have you been doing? What are you, uh, have you been doing some collaborations? Um, what's been going on? Just uh, so much has happened. Uh, let's see what's been going on. Um, first of all, I'm doing a lot more trance channeling. So trans -channeling? Um, trans channeling. So here's the difference. Um, and I didn't know the difference until fairly recently because <laughs> I didn't I didn't do it. But um, channeling in the way that I've been doing it in the past might be a little bit more like, you know, tarot card reading or other people's work, although I don't have cards. The difference really is more like before people would ask questions and I kind of get some pictures like I see, you know, I see Trump walking leaving the White House, kicking and screaming, carrying um, George Washington's statue, which he's stolen, you know, and then I would interpret what I think that means, right? So a lot of things, a lot of it was, you know, I was learning how to do it and I wanted people to watch me trying to interpret it. And sometimes my interpretation was totally wrong. Um, Kavanaugh, great example in the end, uh, whether it's accurate maybe in the beginning, but- We've all um, done that, the, don't, yeah. We've all <laughs> done that. <laughs> I'm still not over it. I'm still hoping my prediction would, my interpretation of the prediction will come true. So that's kind of one thing where you just, you see the images and you're like, I think this means this. A lot of it was metaphor. Um, in trans channeling, I'm like, okay, I'm going to just <clears throat> do a lot of protection. And actually, I feel like spirit is entering my body. So it, when it happens, it'll be something like, you know, I'm talking, but I, I don't, I don't think about it. It's just, I'm just, I'm just talking and I'm just like saying these things. And as, as I'm saying, and I understand them, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily remember after the time. Um, so the other thing is that I, I often will just like, you know, I'd be like, I wake up a little bit like the, uh, uh, past life regression I did with you yeah. is the um, you just didn't remember. So sometimes I'll be like, what I say? And when I'm doing the trance channeling, I'll use really odd words. Like I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll do this really thing where I'm like, yes, my child. <laughs> it's like speaking to like an old person or something. And, you know, it's like, it's like it would be kind of patronizing. So I would never speak that way, but right. I will just um you know using these kind of very um i can't describe it but like more like universal words that you would read in a spiritual text from 2000 years ago you know like kind of wow. um yeah i can't i can't explain it and i will say i i've been told a long time ago that i would do that but i really took my time yeah. because you know i I don't necessarily want some spirit jumping in my body and trying to talk, you know, I was like, well, I don't know about that, you know, am I really willing to do that? And I don't know those spirits well enough. I really did. I mean, I spent time teaching people how to do protection for years before I did it myself and let that come through. Um, it was, it is very important. And I would tell everybody, you know, do be very careful when you're learning to do that. Cause you don't want to just any old spirit jumping in. You want to make sure it's, it's in the highest good. And, um, it has, um, my best interest at heart and that I'm ready, you know, that I feel comfortable with it. Um, if there's underground issues going on in your life, you know, they can come out as you know, in this work, they will come out. Yeah. Um, you will deal with your stuff it's not like life is perfect from here on in and we're like, oh yeah we're channeling it's like oh god i'm i still have to argue with the neighbor because they're making a racket you know it's just as like any other time there's yeah. nothing new about it but i think yeah. that you know what i've noticed what after i've done the work and i'm um, continuing and doing the work is that i pause when a situation comes up and i really sit back and say 
Mm. What is this? Why is this irritating me? What's going on? And what's the best action? I mean, those that all of that questioning inside of my head, usually all of less than, you know, a split second of questioning, but I'm realizing that I am literally walking through situations tons better than I ever have in my lifetime. Uh, you that's know, true. And, you know, I have yeah. things that used to, you know, when I was in my twenties, I was the Karen. I'm now I'm not, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm doing so much better at just uh, knowing what reality, you know, what the truth is in mm -hmm. what I'm really, really dealing with. And, you know, who is it that I, that I am an, an encountering at this moment? It's not like I have to be mean, cruel or anything like that. It's just that what, how do I, it's like, be kind, no matter what really, really, really resonates with me uh, nowadays. Like I can handle each and every situation with kindness. How am I going to be kind here? And yeah, great. yeah so that's really, that's, totally different so all right my dear are you ready for some questions i'm ready all right yeah like i do that too sometimes the energy is really thick on my neck and i'm i'm watching my wow. video and i watch myself go like this i'm like oh goodness she <laughs> <laughs> relax <laughs> yeah i do that too okay let me get back to the questions okay so here's here's the first question is it says Sheila and Dave? I just want to know where the Ark of the Covenant is. Thank you both for the help that you have given us during this crazy time. Go Dims, <laughs> and that's from Betty. Hi Betty. Okay, it's funny because even as you're beginning, I saw um, a sort of gully between two mountains. It's near the water. I'm looking at some buildings which. Give me the feeling of Israel. Um, it's but it's near the water. Okay. Um, it's at the base of some kind of um, structure, like a castle. But I'm not sure if this. I, I I think it's more almost a total ruined castle now. But. Um, Hey, who's moving it around? There's a, there's a lot of activity around it, as if maybe it was excavated and moved or, I mean, I, I, I have, as it's explained, a little bit of a fear that it is deteriorated or um, somehow um, been disassembled there's um characters that look like assyrians they may not be but i don't know well enough these characters they look a little bit egyptian a little bit assyrian and they seem to be um almost like taking it apart i i have a feeling that it has either deteriorated um or been uh removed and sort of taken apart i can see pieces of wood that may still exist so i have to say i'm not totally confident that it exists as it did it may be that portions of it still exist i would also say you know um let us think of the meaning of the ark of the covenant you know it, it that's seems important to say, you know, um, spirit exists in so far as we can talk to spirit, right? I mean, it exists in my belief, but um, yeah. the connection is there because we feel it and we can see it. It's always there. Even if you cannot see spirit, it's there, right? So what's the meaning of the Ark of the Covenant? It's a agreement between us and spirit that we will sort of work together. I think, well, Betty, it's important to note that, you know, spirit's always there. The Ark of the Covenant is there in your heart and in spirit's heart. You can connect in that way right now in, in the way that you want to. 
I'm sorry if that's not a great no, that's answer. Okay. I wish I could. No, I, I, <laughs> I completely understand what you're saying. And my my take on it has always been a little bit of, dare I say, like alien kind of like Ark of a Covenant. Like, like us and the aliens had this agreement and this was the Ark of the Covenant. Now, there's no proof to even, you know, even get to the proof of that. But that has always been my feeling. It's not necessarily, mm-hmm. and the church took that on, you know, like they, they adopted it or some, something yeah. along that lines. But that has always been my feeling that this was a alien human being agreement of, of what has happened. And I too think that it's, it's gone. I, I think it's, that it's, too far gone it's too ancient right it's did not well, last we, the time we think of like hey at some level we made an agreement to come to earth and have this experience we're all really good soldiers we all chose a really difficult mission you know human life is a difficult life i don't care who you are it's not easy um so in that sense hey um you know we got to feel like there's a good relationship here. We're being protected for going here. We're being um, guided in some sense. Yeah. It's an important. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be symbolic as, as much as it was an actual thing. Absolutely. I believe yeah. that. All right. So here is the uh, next question. This is from Susan. Uh, says hello there to you to you both and thank you for sharing your gifts with us my question is with the world and the people evolving to the higher energy state why are these low-level politicians such as green mcconnell gates harley the list is endless um and of course clarence thomas why are they seemingly going to continue in their positions Will we continue to endure these types for a significant amount of time? Okay, so that's a good it's a good question because I have my own personal opinion just from having sort of asked universe about this. Uh, but um, let's just, before we get to my opinion, we'll just see, see how spirit answers this. <clears throat> you know what I get? Um, light must respond to dark. So it kind of corresponds to what I believe. Let's see if there's another way to put this from spirit. In order for the, I have to use a metaphors, in order for the tree to uh, grow again, all the leaves have to come off. You know, um, I'm just seeing that tree and I once had a terrible you know, intuition as I'm looking at this tree. I was in a relationship that wasn't very good and, um, the last little leaf came off and I was like, oh my God, this is so depressing. And then when I really checked it out, I was like, no, time to move on. It's time for your new spring. And um, that's, you know, all of us have really come forward. Sheila and I have really come forward. And part of it is just our love of humanity. And I want to include everybody in Sheila and me, all of you are coming forward here and going, no, no, this is not okay. And many women are here who are saying, I am woman, hear me roar. Okay, you will not take away my rights. I think that had to happen. We were probably just sleeping a little bit. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> that terrible war in Iraq, it was so unjust. And most, you know, most of us have thought it was unjust, but we just really didn't feel there was anything we could do about it. Um, we, we had to have that same experience, I think, on our own soil for us to go, you know, no, we are not going to allow it. We're not going to allow women to become subject to men. We're not going to allow that to happen. Um, and, you know, Drew, for me, the uh, white guy, you know, I'm not going to allow others' rights to be taken away. Um, I'm not going to allow X, Y, Z. Um, now we're getting a bit into my own, kind of, I asked this question myself many times. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I think it's really important to put this on the optimistic side. 
and say, look at all of us, look at how we are coming forward to address this problem and look at how it's a bit more of a divine feminine sort of way. As you were mentioning, you're just much more conscientious. We try not to talk down to people. We try to be reasonable. We try to manage our own feelings and still stick to the guns that we have and move forward. I think it's um, a I think the darkness had to show up in such a huge, huge way so that we could go to the next level of self-awareness and activity and community. Well, look at our own lives. I did not ever grow without the pain showing up. Yep. I I could I'll skate along everything's happy 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 but you see then I won't move or maneuver away from happiness. I have to go deep and get into some pain in order for uh for that more enlightenment will will actually or more mm -hmm. uh self maybe emotionally intelligence or whatever that contrast mm -hmm. has to be there. So mm -hmm. um, I guess that I think you answered that answer. I said, like, it'll never go away. However, what we're doing is we're, we're making the light a majority and that is important to recognize in, in a lot of us. Absolutely. All right. So the next one is from queen. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Um, human genetic, <laughs> that's her name, <laughs> human genetic. I keep hearing that there is a, f a flood of Republicans turning away from the GOP right now. Many say that they won't vote while others plan to vote blue. How widespread is this trend and how will it impact the Republicans' chance for re-election? It's a great question. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> let me just tell you what I'm seeing because it's interesting. Um, there's the sun and there's a cloud that's covering the sun, right? And I can't help but think of that's the, the dark forces that are conservatism. And I don't want to stereotype conservatives. There are perhaps some good things about them, but the darkness that um, has sort of overtaken the party is covering the sun there's a sort of silver lining around it. And I feel like the silver lining are those Republicans who are turning away. I don't think it's a huge amount of people. Um, and it's hard to say, cause you know, here's the silver lining, here's the cloud. I don't know the percentage as I look at it now, but I can't help but see, you know, I know a couple of very reasonable Republicans. They did vote for Trump. But generally speaking, they're quite reasonable. They're pro-choice. So I think I have to think of those and go, well, um, are they going to turn away from the Republican Party? And in the case of the people I know, no. They're just Republicans no matter what. But I think I'm seeing a few more thoughtful people as I look who are maybe um, kind of calming down a bit. Now, there, there, it's this, the, the media that we're seeing, you know, Fox News, it's so agitating. It's so agitating that you get in that state of total agitation. And somehow I'm seeing people who are just like, I'm sick of being this agitated. I'm just sick of being this exhausted. Trump is exhausting me. It is exhausting the nation. Maybe we should turn to a more, I almost feel like they're going to be a little bit more centrist. Uh, and, you know, I think of like David Brooks is um, one of those guys. He's a, you know, a pretty good pundit. He's one of the few conservatives I can stand to watch because he does make some good points. He's usually on uh, PBS NewsHour. But what percentage of it is, let me see if I can get a, okay, now I'm getting the full temperature, like a thermometer going up and down. What does, uh, I'm not sure what that means. It's just like the thermometer has gone to, oh, you know what? The thermometer has gone to a reasonable heat. Ooh. It's like 72. <laughs> okay. It's comfortable. It's not the coming down. So I think that's the thing is that's how what's happening is the temperatures coming down a bit. Mm -hmm. um, somehow, you know, it's just the temperature was really high a few years ago. Um, you know, obviously certain factors made it high. 
Let's see if we can just get one more image on. Will it make a difference? My feeling is that it will not make that much difference what Republicans do. The Republican smidgen of people is not that huge. There are centrists, however, who voted Republican, and they are the ones that are going to make, they are the ones that really matter. Um, there are, um, they will, you know, perhaps change their minds. I think they will change their minds. The centrist people have had enough. Um, and also, there are just things that are more concerning than Hillary's emails right now. They're just things that are so much more important. But I also got to say the difference in this election is going to be the left voters. All we need is 20 year olds to turn out. There will never be a Republican president again if 20 year olds turned out. Yes, if, I agree. I think we have a really big, you know, the polls don't reach 20 year olds. Yeah. Um, so the, we have to remember that. And yeah. we have a we we do have a a uh, Gen Z is what we call them the Gen Z a movement they really are getting to their people in the colleges and stuff so mm. here's let's, here's something that was really interesting especially on this question is is my brother has been Republican staunch Republican okay so mm. this last year he has given up um, talking about it. Uh, he won't even talk about it. I just talked to him again today because we're planning on um, doing Thanksgiving together. And we would not be able to do this a couple of years ago because of the political thing. But he literally he literally says said to me today, I have given it all up. I am tired of it. Every wow. time I hear a Republican say they're both liars, it reminds me, so I'm hearing this more and more and more again, is what it's telling me is they're going to abstain from voting. They're not going to ever vote for a Democrat because they can't oh. come out of that, but they're going to abstain from voting. Like I have given mm -hmm. it up. I was like, because my brother, let me tell you, he's a Mississippi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Say no more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I, it, I was stunned. I mean, he literally said, "I was like, I have given it all up." Mm. You're right. Mm. That temperature is starting to come down because if my mm -hmm. brother can do that, anyone would. You know what I mean? uh, so mm -hmm. we will be able to have a a family, and we both said we both agree. It's like there will be no politics. I said we're doing this for the children. And we have to have a heart, you know, uh, a heart commitment that we will not talk about politics whatsoever. And so, and he agreed to it. So that's even, that's even something, right? Ah, uh, good for you guys. Both of you. Good for him too. I mean, well, it's, he, it's a tough thing to do. Well, that's where, that's where I'm starting to see the change in my own family. So it has mm -hmm. to be happening a lot. And I didn't do that to him. I didn't like as a Democrat convinced him anything else. He did yeah. this on his own. He chose his own. So mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. wanted to put that, I put, I put a little story out there, a little um, encouragement or a little, um, what, what you call it, some hope. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. just maybe. <laughs> yeah. yes. Good job. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have Queen Ellis um, 111. Mm-hmm. I have my dogs are they're they're fighting. Hang on, let me go get the blanket for my little one because that's what oh, she really okay. wants. Hang on a second. Okay, now that we have the doggy settled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we have uh, Queen Ellis 111. Um she says, I want to know if there will be a major world event before the end of the year. I feel a big change coming. Putin. That's the first face that I see, Putin. And um, I get meltdown. And by that, I see like an icy mountain melting. Um, and it's interesting because all the ice melts and all the ice is melting. And before there was, um, in, with, the, with ice caps, there was no way to get to the end of like sort of the ridge of the mountain. But now the mountain ridge has a roadway there. Ooh, this is a really awesome image. Oh, wow, it's great. So here's the, um, here, there's a car going and it's like, like a Jeep. 
and it's on that new road along the mountain edge and it's not able to go all of the way but it's getting closer and closer to another mountain and on the other mountain um it's i think it's Zelensky is waving and it's like he's waving um to the people it's almost like there's going to be it definitely has a feeling of resolution now they haven't they're not haven't met yet they haven't gotten to an, a meeting but something's going to happen with putin okay now i'm getting no more putin image mm. what you doing there putin he looks he looks nearly dead and there's like like red splotches like red on his face i mean he looks like somebody who like has a horrible disease of the skin and and then he just fades away so i i don't think putin i mean we've been saying this for a while i don't think putin's gonna last long yeah we've been we've been definitely been saying that i mean i remember doing a a, a reading on him a long time ago right right after he had gotten another 20 or 30 years in office right I remember doing a race like he's not gonna last long and of course in the comments like he just up to 4 30 i was like no i'm telling you the cards are telling me he's not gonna last he's not gonna mm-hmm. last long. so that was like a year ago so and here we are right maybe mm-hmm. those splotches are um poison i don't know that's just my own take uh, or gunshots oh for entertainment purposes only for entertainment purposes only and we don't wish death on anyone even putin right but we're just we're just done with the universe tells us. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes. I'm I am resolved to that too. It's like I'm just gonna tell you what I see. Yep. And let you guys work it out in the um, wilderness. Okay, here we have the next one is Sharon. And she says, Hi Sheila, hi Dave. If the Dims take both House and Congress as predicted, uh-huh. not <laughs> us predict the Dims or the Dims, yeah. As predicted, what impact will that have on stock market and economy? Or mm. for which offense for which offense will 45 ultimately be convicted? Okay, there's two questions there. So there I'll two. answer the first one, then we'll go to 45 sure um and um it's kind of an if question which is a little bit tricky but i do i have seen that the dems will take both houses um and um just by the way um michael moore is a a really interesting read on this topic because i was shocked that i saw that i'm like this is really i'm really going on a limb here i must be wrong but then i actually read michael moore who said the same thing um and um he did say it's because women it said women are going to respond to the um <clears throat> right to their own bodies so um let's just say this is going to happen it's very interesting i'm seeing biden on a beach and he's alone on a beach and you know how like especially on the east coast like cape cod they have those like kind of fences and then the beach sand has made the fences all kind of wonky right i'm really getting the fence and the fence is almost like you know stock market or economy kind of things yeah but biden is very much alone on the beach oh but a huge ship comes in and that seems pretty clear let's see if anybody gets out Okay, ship comes in. Strange people get off the ship. And they come after him. They're actually coming after Biden, like, oh, I'm gonna kill you. Uh oh. Biden um seems to manage to sort of get around them, right? So somehow it like gets to the point where he's sort of behind those fences and they can't find him. I don't think those are literally people. I think those are the economic problems, you know, just this, 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 and this. I mean, so there's just things that are beyond Biden's control, like Saudi Arabia is not going to, you know, they're going to do what Trump wants because, you know, Trump gave them everything. So um, Biden is going to be their enemy. And so I, I'm, and I actually kind of see them sort of plotting, but there will be challenges. That's what I'm getting. 
But Biden is just looking more, you know, can you imagine Biden like jumping over a fence? No, but (laughs) Biden seems to be doing, he's going like this, it's okay. Like it's not great in the beginning, but things get reasonably better. So I wanna say like there's gonna be a pretty mixed bag economically, there will be challenges for him and a lot of challenges and he really will be like alone in the woods which has its good aspects because then we can give biden some credit and uh but um obviously it has it's it's going to be a tough road for him so that's i i gotta say as i'm watching this i'm giving biden a lot more credit he seems thoughtful and his heart's in the right place um so what is there anything else we know Okay, a lightning bolt is, strikes the beach. Things change. The ship shows up again. Oh, and then the um, the people who were after him get back on the ship and leave. So um, I I don't think it will be a you know booming economy necessarily. I think it will have its ups and downs. But I don't think that it will be bad. And I see Biden giving a little bit of a sort of sad smile. I have to tell you, when Biden is reflected upon in the future, he will be considered a much better president. Uh, he, um, he, when he, when we look at the things that he did, we will realize that he was actually quite a good president. Um, one thing I, you know, people, somebody asked me, well, what's Biden ever done for you? And the answer for me is ended child poverty. It's like, nobody talks about that, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. yes, absolutely. huge strides in ending child poverty. Yeah. And that's important to me, you know? Yeah, I agree. You know, um, as you were talking, it kind of reminded me because he, you know, they just picked a fight with China. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it, because that's what the uh, DOJ come out about. DOJ. Right. Yeah, he just talked about somebody. And they so they just kind of they, they just kind of did a little slight to, to China and, and kind of thwarted uh, a lot of the abuse that they were doing to people here in the United States. Mm-hmm. So, and, and they were talking about, I, say, I guess, um you know, they were intimidating, they were making, you know, accusations, and they were doing a lot of stuff. So they just picked a fight with China. So this may be the ship that coming in, and they're angry. I was thinking maybe that had a lot. Yeah, to do it. yeah. I feel like it was multiple factors, yeah. but certainly China would be in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in the second one is which offense will 45 ultimately be convicted of first? Which offense convicted of first? So spirit, which offense will Donald Trump be convicted of? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, I'm seeing Donald and he is not looking good. He is looking like a guy at death's door and he's also looking like he's in distress. Um, He um, looks really, really bad. And it's kind of hard to just explain it because it's almost like psychically, spiritually bad. It's not even just in the body. It's like uh, psychologically he is, he looks like he's about to come apart. So understand, you know, he could be so sick that he might not survive. Um, I don't, I don't think that's the truth necessarily, but understand that he's not having a good time, right? A little schadenfreude there for you. But what offense? So uh, Robert Mueller shaking his head. It's like, not that one. Ooh, Letitia James is looking good. She is a bit more confident. So Letitia James is the one that I have the most confidence in. And I think Letitia James, she's in she's in Georgia, right? No, Letitia James is in New York. But I th- okay. ironically, I think Georgia, when you said Georgia, I think um I forget her name, but 
Maybe that's who I'm seeing. Maybe I'm confusing Connecting those. Georgia, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's just ask. So, Spirit, is it the Georgia fight? Yeah. I'm not, yeah. Um, I, I think actually it is the New York fight. I think it is Letitia James. And I know that's not a criminal, um, that's not criminal. I know that's more um, just a civil, but she's smiling in a some sense. I think it might be what she discovers there is, um, is applicable to more serious law. It might also be that she is, um, <clears throat> Letitia is just very, hmm, She's the one that kind of gives his his company the coup de grace. And when she does that, once he is economically unable even to pay his lawyers, that's when he really um, falls. So that's kind of the feeling I get. She's showing up with a little sword now, like, and she seems to be able to do it. So it's like popping a balloon. Um, so I think Letitia's got more going on than she does. I also, I'm sort of being reminded, you know, stealing those you know, thousands of documents is an extremely serious crime. He should be in prison right now um, just for the safety of our nation. But I think that that is so huge. It is such a difficult and huge thing to prosecute that they may not actually get to the point where he is found guilty of those crimes. That doesn't mean he won't get in trouble for those crimes. Um, I have always seen that Trump does go to prison, um, that he is put in jail, and let's just see if I'm right. I mean, part of my feeling is, is that taking those documents and putting them in his house, actually, the national security is so important that they just, they just have a way to put him in jail, and they'll just have him awaiting trial. Uh, that's kind of my, my personal opinion, but let's take a look and see if that's okay, if that's right. Okay, I'm seeing like a, a road around a mountain and it's like a red line is going around the mountain. There's just so many political things that he's, you know, there's just so many crimes actually. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of police cars. And it appears an ambulance. Yeah, you know, um, part of me is thinking that maybe some medical issue um, means he's got to go to a hospital and while he's there, you know, they find they find more stuff. So he just doesn't leave the hospital. Um, that's kind of an impression. So it's a complicated question. Let's try it. Let me just ask one more time. What puts Trump in? What's the first crime he is convicted of. Mm, this is really complicated. I'm actually seeing a bust of Abraham Lincoln. What's the crime? He's showing me the Constitution. He's showing me specific rules in the Constitution. Yeah, you know, I kind of get a basic, um, he broke the rules that are explicit in the Constitution. So in terms of real crime, I think the, I think, and this is a bit me extrapolating from what I saw, that um, the real crime was taking the papers, not that he hasn't done any crimes, other crimes, but the crime is taking those papers. That is a, the serious, a serious crime. And I'm not sure how he can get out of it. You know, again, our national security depends. It doesn't matter what the jury thinks. Our national security depends on him being under our control. You know, I've often seen that um, 
Trump and getting in an airplane and going to Saudi Arabia, like escaping. And I saw this like years ago and I'm like, this is crazy, Dave. You know, you should don't say this on YouTube because people are, <laughs> it can't be true. But I've recently noticed a couple other people predicting the same thing. I think it is entirely possible that Trump will try to escape. Yeah. Well, take- ironically, his plane got fixed. Yeah. And it's sitting yeah. on the termex. Yeah. You know, it's like out and about. <laughs> so a lot of other people are starting to see a little and I'm thinking let him go. Yeah. And and then and then never let him back into this country again. Yeah. I think the danger is he might take those really important documents. Oh, this is true. The information And so difference. they're going to have to stop him. Not to mention he might just babble to anybody he wants, you know. Um there's now reports now that he just babbled, you know, secret Anyone. information orders yeah so we may have no choice i yeah, think I, this, see, I see georgia i see georgia and the dj like handed like this there uh-huh no, and that could be it might be letitia james yeah, is like, yeah it's like, like, like right you know there's no like, way of really knowing <laughs> it's like really a, a powerful force of black women because i yeah. know that <laughs> and i think it's really awesome that that's happening too that trump's you know <laughs> going to be under undermined and um by the those two i think would be pretty awesome yeah i agree yeah. i agree all right so let's move on to shay uh laughter that's what her name is, Shay Laughter. Um, will the American justice system go down hard on Trump? We just kind of answered that. So I think we're going to pass that one up because yeah. of the lawlessness of nature. Okay, so we're going to pass that one. Wow. We kind of covered that already. Let's see if we move on. Um, Rhonda Brown, um, I love you both. I am just curious. I watched some TV series, every this TV series every week, and it seems to me they are way waving in some politics um learning progressive i love it i don't know leaning progressive and i love it but my question is lately i've noticed the shows talking about aliens is this a ploy to get americans used to being introduced to aliens soon Hmm. I just noticed a New York Times article today about how more people are, you know, believing in the supernatural. And they were kind of saying it was a pandemic thing. Everybody was just home thinking about these things and noticing more. It could be. But um, let's just see. And I'm just going to um, I'll, and also tell you from my own perspective, I was not necessarily a believer or disbeliever in aliens. I did not. It's like, OK, maybe. But I, I, oh, doing this work over time, I, I do feel sometimes that I'm, I'm really talking to a collective alien um, group of people. You know, I think it's true. Um, I'm totally, I totally um, changed my mind about this. But um, let's just see. And I'm reminded that um, I do certain work. I'm channeling aliens. When I'm doing that trans channeling, that's who it is. Do you guys have a message for us? Okay, they're showing me my pyramid that I always use for protection. Ooh, and the pyramid's going down to earth. And I get this message, now is the time. Now's the time to make the connection. All of us can do this. All of us can make a connection with them. And um, they're telling me this. Um, Sometimes we do send people to earth we uh, we send them to help as helpers. And if you ask, we're there. So aliens may appear as, uh, you know, a, a leader in society. It could be your um, local witch or um, spiritual leader. It could be Buddha. That, that happens all the time. There are aliens among us that are helping insofar as they can. They can be channeled. I think there is a time coming where we are more familiar with them. And they're reminding me of, I did one video out when I was camping and I'm like, oh yes, aliens, I am ready for you. I'm here in my tent. I was alone at this campground. That's something that sometimes happens in Australia. You can actually be the only person at a campground. And I'm like, I am ready for you. And I'm like, okay, close my laptop, went to bed. 
I, in the middle of the night, I hear something strange outside my cabin, my tent. I was so terrified. I'm like, I changed my mind. Don't be yourself. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> I, I was never been so scared in all of my life. I'm like, I'm not ready. Just appear in my, you know, in my <laughs> slowly. Mind. So um, slowly. <laughs> yes. I, I don't think that we are quite ready to face to be face to face with aliens. I think we would be so terrified of them. We would not learn what we need to know. But I totally believe that we contact them um, when we channel, if we desire, and that um, all of those people, humans that we know, when we, they pass in this lifetime, they go to some kind of collective, which we're calling aliens, but we could just call the light. Well, can the aliens please take the Republicans off the earth? <laughs> Can we just ask them to just do us a favor? <laughs> We're We're waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have Joan um Sobil. Sobil. I don't know how to say that last name. Anyhow, onwards. Uh will Brittany G uh, Griner um be back in the United States soon? She has been sentenced to nine years in the penal co colony in Russia for having a small amount of hash uh, oil on her. It's so sad. I hope she can be saved from this horrible, unnecessary sentence. We need to pray for her. But what do you, how do you see, do you ever see her coming back before or of us getting her back? Well, I, first of all, I see her very sad in a prison cell. So I'm gonna ask all y'all just to take a moment right now send love to that woman send send your courage to her that's what she really needs just take a moment and send that to her and you know if you truly see her and do it from your heart i think that would help a little bit um she's very sad in a prison cell i see her you know totally uh weeping and just just really disheartened and um it's reminding her of other forms of oppression that she's experienced because um, I'm pretty sure she's gay woman, right? Um, yeah, gay black a wife. And, you know, that's, you know, already you got a bunch of stuff against yeah. you. Um, so there's that. But she's showing me she's going to get out sooner than, than expected. And not instantly but she says a lot sooner than expected she kind of gives a little bit of a sad smile like it wasn't so bad i'm gonna say it keeps I, I each time i'm thinking i'm gonna say it goes less and less and less when are you gonna get out she's like uh actually not nearly that long like i could get maybe six months but it could be nine but it could be three. I don't think it's entirely clear, but sooner than expected, right? So once more, because you know the doorbell rang, that's okay. We're just gonna let him leave the package. You can go, you can go answer it if you need to. No, I'll I don't. Turn off the beat, okay. When will Brittany Griner, when should she get out? She seems quite um, euphoric now as I'm looking at her. Um, and she really appreciates your love, everyone. It really is sustaining her. When are you gonna get out? It could be as early as three months, um, but it could also be as long as nine, but much, much better than um, we think. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. I kind of feel like um, as soon as Putin is done, yeah that's my feeling the whole time like putin is the only thing that's holding uh her up from coming home yeah so once he's gone right. then they they'll be able to start at the paperwork and get a legit uh you know thing going on getting her so 
I too get so, if the war ends, I yeah, think exactly. she yeah, with Putin gone, war ends, and the you know they'll be more than happy to give her back. Yeah, Here at Dager, you know, because they spend a lot of money on their prisoners, just like we do. I mean, there's no reason to spend extra money. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, Ellen Stetson. I says we have had we have seen how easy it is to alter perceptions of reality for nefarious purposes, such as a gaining control and maintaining power. How does this experience service? Are altering per perceptions part of our collective growth? Mm, good question. Um, <clears throat> so let's just um, get my personal opinion aside here. Um, part of our growth. Absolutely. And you know who I see when I look at this is you, Sheila. Mm -hmm. I just see you and I see you evolving. Yeah, you know, and I just can't help but think. And remember when we, remember you first messaged me like, hey, yeah. Dave, okay if I do a reading on your reading? And I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty nice. You know, so I'm like, sure, you know, and since then, like, look, look where you are. So, yeah. And I think Let's see if spirit puts it better than me, because it usually does. How could we say it? Yeah, again, I'm seeing you, Sheila. And um, you're showing me these um, beautiful plates that you've collected. They're very colorful. Um, specifically, I'm seeing this. I bought this in Barcelona. So when I was thinking of uh, you in Europe, I was thinking of me in Europe, too. And you've got these beautiful plates, right? And so it's sort of like a look look what i've look what i've learned look at all these beautiful things that i've gained and i hope throughout all of this work all of you can look at what we have gained it's not just a loss what have we gained um we have all gained abilities as i am going to say and that's spirit talk here some of you have gained abilities you don't even know you have yet it's like just like Dave and Sheila, you in the beginning are like, oh no, I don't, this is nothing. Oh no, it's just I'm my imagination or I'm not that good at this, you know. But we hone it. We start to know the difference between ego and spirit. We start to know the difference between, um, you know, paths that are useful for us and paths that are not. And that's really a lot. It's much more than you might um, think. So don't, um, don't hesitate to look at your new evolving gifts. And while you don't want to overstate them, you also want to see that progress because it can't be seen with the eyes, right? I really do feel like we are rising in our consciousness. And this distinction is, as we rise, we notice that others are not rising. And that's one thing that we find so distressing. This part of it is just our own love of humanity. It's like, let's turn towards the light. Come on, how can you, when you're facing this challenge, how can you go towards the darkness? You know, um, how can you go towards, you know, ego and money and know, how could you, leave your humanity at the door and those kids are coming from the border you know what happened to your humanity you know I mean, think of the words of um you know jesus for example what would he do you know there are so many of us who have gone the direction of here's the choice i'm going to choose the light and there's others who given this choice have just decided um i i don't want to i don't want to manage that I'm too grounded in this physical space. Um, I am want it to be 1950 again. There's um, this sort of contrast that's going on. But without that contrast, we wouldn't be able to see our path so well. It's unfortunate in some ways, but I would like to, anyone watching, look at how you've evolved. If only, you know, Sheila and her brother is an example who've decided to go to love and not argue. Yeah. That is huge. huge. That is huge. If you were thoughtful the other day when you thought of arguing with someone and instead said, 
well, everybody has an opinion and here's mine and you're welcome to yours and you welcome them to find their own path. That is gigantic. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've experienced that, man. I mean, talk about it, Karen. I'm like the most righteous corporate employee of all time and a couple of, uh, a couple of, um, you know, past life viewings have helped me go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe good not so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, there was good reason for me to be quite angry at, um, uh, the corporation that was cheating us. Yeah. Um, that anger, you know, helped me get my coworkers together and sue them and win. You know, I got some money out of them, um, and let them know, you know, you, you can't, use you can't this do this. You can't do this. And mm. I think that's what we're getting to is we're getting that. I had, there's a conversation that I had with a, a woman who was raised, um, you know, prejudiced like I was. And she literally says, one thing that has helped me is when I had to choose, you see, uh, she was telling me that, you know, even being a white woman, you even if you're not prejudiced, you can't say that in the white community, right? If you are, 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 are not, you know, for uh, gay and LGBTQ and, you know, transgender, but when you're in that white community, it's hard for you to like speak up. That's what she was telling. She's, you just can't really, you just kind of keep that to yourself. And she said that one thing that has happened in this whole thing is she has ripped herself apart about that. And she will, she is, she is firm on her convictions of being, you know, you know, for a, a woman's choice and this and, mm -hmm. and all of that. And she says, I, I'm not afraid anymore to give, to tell them that, you know, all of that is wrong or what I'm thinking. And I thought that is the enlightenment that we have literally gotten mm -hmm. out of this community is we have so many that are just that is not right and we're going to go this way you know mm -hmm. we are not going to allow it anymore i've always said this many many times that it is the white people that need to start speaking up and and stopping the other white people from being so prejudiced right yes Before you just be quiet and let them do their thing but you know now we're we're going you're wrong Mm -hmm. You need to get back. You, what you're doing, you know. So mm -hmm. that's also a very good enlightenment that we're having. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're fighting. We're fighting. A, a, we're all fighting a good fight on that. And if I could just add a couple more things about like my own evolution, I'm much more likely now to ask a question. Yeah. Like rather than argue with the you know cousin on Facebook, I'm like, well, tell me, have you ever considered that that kid that's walking across a continent? It could be you. Yeah. And yeah. rather than get an answer, it just like kind of stops them for a moment and goes, oh, yeah. Or you would say to somebody who's really Christian and judging, there are many people, you know, well, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jesus told us to um, examine ourselves and not judge others. It's your relationship with God that you need to worry about, not somebody else's. That's not your business. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yes, if you put yeah, it in other people's opinions and, and yeah. just, you know, yeah. but if you couch it in those kind of terms, if you're asking a question and asking them, cause it's on them, they're not, you're not responsible for changing their minds. You may be responsible for laying something out so that they have to think about it, right. but you're not really even responsible for that, but it's a possibility. Also just be an example. You know, one thing that I, I always, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, you didn't fire a gun. You haven't served your country. And it's like, well, you know, the, the, I served my country in the Peace Corps. When I went there, I was invited. And well, I never was in the military, but I served my country. I yeah. served my country as a woman, as a mother, as a person who follows the law. I served my country. Yeah. And everybody is watching serve their country. You know, I don't care. if you're a nursery school teacher, you're like the most important thing. Yeah, in this you country. serve your country. Yeah. Is, so some of the, they think that this eliteness, now the, the military is important, but I'm just saying the eliteness of uh, that's the only way to serve this country is wrong. I've served yeah. this country. Mm -hmm. I was a mother. Yeah. I raised children. I was in the workforce. I pay taxes. I obey the law. You know what I mean? I've served this country. <laughs> and it's not easy. Your no. service is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. Some piece, that's a lot of fathers said, I'd rather go fight a war than fight a teenager. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Given your choices. <laughs> Given your choices. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he has power over here. He has zero over the teenager. Right, right. He gets to wear a uniform. You know? <laughs> He's gonna look good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got a couple more here. I know we're we're getting um, pretty long. So um, here's Jose Meme. The state of Oregon is voting on making health care a human right in the hmm. state constitution in the midterms. Go Oregon. Do you see? Uh, another blue state following suit. Mm. Interesting, because I see um, a big red dot. This might be the Republicans, but it's like a big red circle right in the middle. Okay. And, uh, okay. There's first they're showing me California just to locate me, because um, obviously it's north. What about Oregon spirit? Ooh, this circle has so many different implications. This sort of circle of red. I mean, it's kind of like a sun. So I kind of get a sun setting on this. And this circle also seems to change color. It's becoming pink. And then it's just becoming like a clear you know, you know, often when you look at the sun, it's not necessarily red. The sun, when it's in the sky, is kind of a almost like a just pure white color. So it seems like it's like a very neutral. And I'm going to say with that, I'm going to say that it's almost a neutral. It's almost like a neither blue nor red state. It could be a state that's much more constantly in play. And one reason is very important, and that is the environment. That's what's going to make that state move in the direction of being more liberal, because the fires are going to happen there too. And it's just so important, this the tall trees are just so important to that state. It's like I see people who are becoming so aware of this, the environmental problems that it's not even like they can't live. It's not just a practical, oh, now I have this problem of bad air. Part of it truly is the love of nature that these people have. They are showing up like, I feel bad. Like, I feel bad that my forest burned. You know, I love my forest. It doesn't have to give like people a good deal of credit here, even and though. Are you, not, are you saying like because of the human that they're going to go for the health care? I think because of that, they're going to become more liberal. More uh, liberal. Oh, and go uh, for Yeah. I, it, it, the uh, other states going blue and following suit. I, I, I wasn't necessarily looking at the health care. I was looking more at just the red blueness of that oh, state. Gotcha. I, I can take that. I can take a look at health care. Okay, they're showing me a thermometer again. Hmm. Yeah, it's at 40, which is almost like if you think of a 100 as a total. Um, I kind of feel like it's not as much as we want. Like it's not completely there. It's not the healthcare is a human right so much as it is a sort of a bit of a tempered response. Maybe it's not a human right so much, but it's on the way to becoming a human right. It's on the way to moving forward. Um, I don't know. My feeling now is that Oregon will not necessarily succeed in that regard until the whole United States succeeds, but it will get better. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was almost like when I read that too, it's like they're they're gonna do it, you know, after the midterms and stuff like that. I just think that they pro they're they're not there yet either. So once yeah. they're there, there when Oregon finally, finally gets the final final, um mm -hmm that may be another state but it's it's just like with colorado they legalized marijuana it took 10 years for another state to do so you know what i mean uh -huh. that kind of thing 
So maybe earlier, but it was like, it took a long time. The, the shock of Colorado illegalizing marijuana. <laughs> They're like, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So we have, um, let's see. And th this will probably be the the last one that we have. And we, we have so many other political ones, but we've been going mm. for quite a while. Um, how is Ivanka, Eric, and Donnie feeling mm. about their dad these days? Is daddy fixing his plane for a reason? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, okay, there's so a couple questions there, yeah. actually four, because yeah. there's a lot of people there. So let's start with Ivanka. Okay, she immediately sheds a tear. Um, Ivanka's now like, very worried. She's worried. She is worried about her family. She's extremely worried about her children. And she feels betrayed. She feels um, she's been thrown under the bus. Like, she's, she doesn't have good choices before her. She can't follow her father. She can't go against her father. Uh, she's in an extremely difficult position. But I'm not necessarily certain if given the choices, she will not follow the father. Given the choices, she is going to go, she's going to support her children. She's not entirely happy that her father, she's actually disappointed in her father. And I think January 6th was the turning point. Um, she was one of those people pleading with her father to stop the violence. And actually, that changed her mind. She was willing to tolerate him for her own purposes. She thought she could do some good despite her father. But now um, she's realized that um, it was a mistake, that she shouldn't have um, participated in the government in that way. She should have kept her distance. Now she's in legal jeopardy. I mean, she could go to prison. So she's willing to cooperate. That's her, that's her MO. Now her brothers, not so much. And I'm seeing them, both of them together. They are completely uh, on their father's side. They're angry that they're even being questioned, that their power's being questioned. Um, they're kind of fighting for their father's attention. They've always fought for their father's attention. They've always wanted to be sort of okay in his eyes. And he doesn't like them. He just doesn't like his sons. Um, they're just tools for him. Um, he likes Baron better, actually. He respects Baron. Um, Baron's tall, right? And um, attractive, right? So one thing he doesn't like about his kids is they're not that good looking. And he's a very superficial man. So they've always felt sort of dismissed by him, tolerated by him. And so they're still trying to prove to him that they are going to be a supporter. So they're going to follow him to the death, right? So let's get to the airplane. <laughs> Ivanka is not getting on that plane. <laughs> she is like, no, I am not getting on the plane, you know, and daddy's looking pretty mad about that what do you mean how dare you betray me she's just like i got kids man no way so there's there she is and she's literally on the tarmac like crying that this is how this worked out she i mean i, I don't know if she's literally gonna go to the tarmac and be like bye but that's the way she is and she's shaking her head no no um <clears throat> She's having difficulty even saying goodbye to him. Um, now, again, this could all be symbolic. We don't necessarily know that he's gonna get on this plane. I think it's a possibility, but I mean, the brothers are running to get, get on, you know, like to see who could get on first, who could get the best seat. They have their luggage. <laughs> the luggage is full of cash. It's just like, <laughs> the cash is like sticking out the edges of the suitcases. Like, uh, hey, can let me get on first there. Um, they are quite frightened. Um, they're um, really, again, looking for dad's protection because he's always protected them as a sort of reward for their loyalty. But, um, ooh, this is pretty cool too. Just as they're getting to the airplane, um, Donald Jr.'s um, 
suitcase opens and the money goes everywhere. It goes flying across the tarmac. And they're like, oh, we don't have time to pick this up. God, oh my God, you know, let's get on. Um, he, he's trying to hold it together. He's trying to hold the last suitcase together so that it, the, the money doesn't go everywhere. And it's not just money that's in those suitcases. There are important papers in those suitcases. But they're very worried. They don't, they are very uncertain about whether this will work out very well for them. And uh, I don't think it will. So it's important to know his kids are the key. They're the people that are going to be the most pressured to go against him when it comes to um, legal questions. So they'll be put in a situation where you either sell him out, you tell the truth, or um, you're going to face jail time. And they're not young, right? I mean, they're not so old as Donald. So they could look at the rest of their lives and be in prison. You know, for Donald, you know, he can delay things until he passes. But so what else? Is there anything else about that plane? Melania is also saying no way. And yeah, very forcefully. She's mad. She's ang she's much more angry. She doesn't have she doesn't have much sympathy for Donald anymore. And I mean she's taking one of her, her pointy shoes and kicking him in the knee. Like, no, I'm not going. Lots of people don't want to get on. There's like his assistants. They're like, um, you know, um, I think I've got an appointment. Um, he's managed to convince his sons, although they're worried, um, and some really strong acolytes. Okay, so again, I, I'm not sure if this is a real plan. I don't know if he's really going to go to Saudi Arabia. It could be just a symbolic thing where he's dealing with them in some secret way. He would have to find a pilot that's willing to give up his life. Yeah. That's right. the problem I think he's having the most is finding a pilot that is willing to give up because none of them fly a plane. And they would have to, he would have to hire a pilot to do yeah. that. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, some yes and no uh, rapid fire questions real here, real quick. Um, is he going to go to the, is he going to go to the January 6th subpoena? Is he going to talk? Yes or no? Well, okay, I'm asking a couple of times. Is he going to go to January 6th? No. One more time. Is he going to go to January 6th? Huh? Maybe I shouldn't double guess myself, but here, once more. Is he going to January? Is he going to testify in January 6th? He's looking like he's saying no. That's all. I'm just going to go with my first answer. All right. Well, the his his lawyers accepted the subpoena so i don't know what that's all about i just saw that in the news real quick i don't know, mm -hmm. that, that we haven't really I don't know if it's going to be my, my my impression is it will not be public no, right no if he goes no. yeah it will not i wish they would but they they're not going to do that no we're going to treat him the same as everybody else no you know nobody else went public when they were doing right. the things so they're going to do it right. the exact same way um which, you know, kudos to them that they do that. Okay, so another one. Um, will Nancy Pelosi still be a house or are they going to uh, pick another house? Um, will she, if, she, if they win the house, will she retire and then let somebody else? Not immediately. No. Um, it, it will be a couple years into her tenure, maybe even a year or two um, before she gives it up. She is aware that she is aging and she is aware that there will be a time when um, she has to go. Um, but she believes <clears throat> it's important for her to move forward in such a way that she ensures that it is successful. She is the most experienced person. Um, she is good at what she does. And she wants to be really, really sure the next person is going to um, be, uh, <clears throat> is going to go. Um, and I'm seeing the face of that guy. Um, he's a senator from California. He's basically the best looking senator. I can't remember what his name is, this Democrat guy. Um, he's kind of famous because in an interview, he farted. 
Um, I was like, oh, poor man, it's what's his career is ruined at that moment. But um, I can see his face, but I can't, I can't remember his name at the moment. I'm sure the viewers, when I say like yeah. good looking Senator <laughs> from California, I'll know who it is, but I see his face. And I'm, sometimes when I do this work, I can't remember all the names of people. I was thinking AOC, but maybe not. Yeah. I don't, I don't see her. I think she's too radical for them. Um, I, this guy's much more tempered, um, mm. much more kind of neutral. Cool. cool. All right. Anyways, um, thank you, everyone. If you've made it this far, thank you. We really, really appreciate that. And thank you for all of your questions. I will probably be doing a future video on answering a little bit more of those questions that you did provide. So thank you, Dave. Um, is there any last um, words that you would like to leave them with? Mm, vote. Uh, yeah. <laughs> vote because our democracy depends on it. And um, don't worry too much you know think positive it might be that this election isn't the one um and that we have to continue to go through difficult times that just might be the nature of the universe um and but we will it will eventually succeed uh it's just a question of us you know coming forward and transforming ourselves in this time of transformation well we're done we're done with all of them <laughs> I, I, back in the day, I used to have a little bit more compassion for them. Boy, they ripped that right out of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's gone. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye.